What's going on guys? I hope everybody's having a great day so far. Wanted to take you along on my little project here that I'm starting which is going to be growing out this Monte Carlo. Look at all that stuff. Immersed in a little greenhouse tub thing. While I look around looking for the lid, I'll find that later. Um, this is just a great way to, it's kind of like a growth hack for plants. A lot of them do very well immersed. Most aquatic plants do best when they're up out of the water and that's exactly what we're gonna do today. Hopefully, what we're gonna get out of this Monte Carlo a couple months down the road. A lot of you guys probably already know about this method. I've showed you how to do it with other plants before, but not Monte Carlo. I'm absolutely loving the stuff that I have in my Blue Dream shrimp tank, and I just wanna have a ton of this stuff whenever whenever I need it to do, to do escape. So the goal here is to just grow out a bunch of it. It's becoming springtime, as you can tell, because I'm getting back into my house plants and some other things outside. So plant ponds and all of this fun stuff is a lot easier for me to do. Real quick here, I just, I gotta show you guys the vibe here. Look at these vibes, man. Let me, let me, let me get the light here. Boom. Wow. I just, I'm really liking the ecosphere, guys. I can't wait to do another one. If you didn't see that video, check the description. I'll put a link to it, hopefully. Hopefully I remember to. But it's getting a little interesting. I don't wanna spoil it though. We'll, we'll do an update video soon. But anyway, you can use this same principle with a bunch of different aquatic plants. It just works best with not stem plants. Okay, you can do it with stem plants, but in my experience doing it with foreground plants and plants that are tough to grow in your aquarium or tough to get a lot of all at one time, which is more so the case with the Monte Carlo, this can provide a huge advantage to you. So let's go ahead and get started again. This is just a couple, you know, a two or three inch greenhouse tray thing. And then I have a lid for it right here, which we'll put on top. And that'll help to keep humidity in if, you know, if we're gonna do it indoors, we definitely wanna do this. Um, but as the summer goes on, we can take this outside and we don't need to have this. I just, when I start it, I wanna be able to have that humidity. So here I have some miracle Grow indoor potting mix, not organic, nothing special. We're just gonna go ahead and dump it in. Ever so surely, one-handed, holding a camera. Oh my gosh. I also highly recommend doing this outside and not inside, but you know me, always gotta, always gotta do it the hard way. Check it out, we got almost up to the top, but a good layer of soil, probably an inch, an inch and a half thick, should be all we need for our Monte Carlo here. So here we have some potted Monte Carlo, and I chose to use this instead of tissue culture just because this stuff is already grown really well and it's not gonna be too much of a shock, whereas you know going from tissue culture, that's obviously a very different type of environment. So I think this stuff is gonna be able to grow the fastest as soon as we get it planted. So I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna depot these and plant them, space them out a couple of inches, and that's pretty much it. Here we are about a week after the whole setup and you'll notice that there's some different stuff going on here and I'll try my best to explain it. Let's move this really quick and let's take a look at what we have. So I think there's been a little bit of growth. Again, it's been about a week. We'll have to compare this to what it looked like when we first set it up to really be able to tell, but so far so good. I'm having a little bit of rot and die off of this piece but upon inspection, it looks like this is all it's gonna do. So that's that's the worst it's gonna get. Everything else looks pretty good. This piece really looking nice. It's kind of starting to spread out. You see a couple stems starting to crawl around. Same with this guy over here. 
So all in all, I'm pretty happy. I am using the natural daylight. This is usually open, but my back deck is a mess, so don't want to show that off. I've also been supplementing light a little bit because you can't go wrong with a lot of light on a setup like this. This is just something that I had laying around that was nice because it fit over here on the ecosphere. I'm kind of going back and forth, but I do have something that I'm making that should make all of this a lot better. And if we wanna cheat and put a light on a bunch of ecospheres, we can do that as well. So be on the lookout for that, just a little project that I have that I just haven't finished yet. Maintenance on this thing is super easy. I'd say every three days I come in and spray it down a little bit with this guy right here, super handy to have. And that's pretty much it, guys. The humidity really helps. I mean, I can take the lid off of this and leave it for a couple days and the plant doesn't overly dry out or anything, but the humidity definitely helps. This plant wants to have some moisture in the air. So what I wanna do is eventually do an experiment where we make one of these outside and we don't have a dome on it and basically just see if it can tolerate my environment in the summer it's not very humid here so i'm a little concerned to to see if this would even work but hey that's what experiments are for right anyway just wanted to be able to give you kind of like a week update in the same video for this and then the the ecosphere you guys will get an update for that pretty soon here as well i also wanted to show off the peacock gudgeon tank because it's been a while you'll notice that if we step back here it looks pretty good, but if we get closer, it's, uh, it clearly has a few issues. The fine kind of dusty algae has been a problem in this tank basically since it was started, and it's been something that I haven't been able to completely get rid of. This tank is pretty hard to balance, mainly because we have a super slow growing plant, the moss balls that we have super glued around the dragonstone. That algae is super slow growing, and it's not gonna be something that is going to aggressively be taking down nutrients out of the tank. And again, when we have a tank that doesn't have a lot of nutrient sponges in it, it can make it tough to balance. But I'll be honest with you guys, because I'm always way back here in the couch looking at this tank, it doesn't really bug me that I have this algae in here. I mean, it doesn't look bad from far away, which is where I'm primarily watching this tank from. And I still think it looks pretty good just like this. I haven't completely given up though. I'm upping the maintenance on this tank and tweaking things a little bit to see if I can at least put a stop to the aggressive growth of this stuff. You're seeing this tank after I cleaned it really well last night. So it's just something that I've been dealing with and something that is sometimes hard for all of us to deal with. But the peacocks are looking really, really good. There's a male right there. He used to hide for like weeks at a time back here in one of the cracks in the dragonstone one of the holes back there and i'm glad that he's spending more time out in the front of the tank he's fun to watch but, but all these fish are just super super colorful loving these guys here we have my favorite cluster of tanks the jungle and the new desert aquarium the other day I thought it might be a good idea to clear out some of the duckweed slash redroot floaters out of this tank. It was completely covered. There was no light getting down into this tank. And you can tell now that there is, there's a decent amount of light in there. Kind of cleaned it up a little bit, did a big old water change. But then I thought, well, I'm just kind of throwing all this stuff away. What if I put some over here in the desert tank to kind of chill stuff out? Because I have been getting a little bit of algae I recently kind of toothbrushed off a lot of the green stuff that was on top of those rocks that are high up. Um, and so kind of like what happens whenever you do anything with duckweed, you put it in a tank and then you instantly regret it. And that's exactly what happened. So I immediately tried to clear out as much of it as possible because I put way too much in. Um, the red root floaters would be nice if those were just by themselves. They're a lot easier to manage, but there was no way I was gonna be pulling out these pieces and not getting a ton of duckweed. It just would have taken way too much time to separate the two. So I said, what the heck, I'll dump it in. If I don't like it, I'll take it out. And then, you know, I've been trying to get everything out of this tank now for, um, a couple days so time to get back to doing that as soon as I turn the camera off but the desert tank we have another organism on the way that we'll be putting in here and then we'll do an update um, kind of some maintenance and stuff I haven't touched the cactuses yet I'm saving that for that next video so hope you guys are excited for that I am anyway guys I hope you enjoyed today's video I'll end it here with a shot of the Jurassic puffer tank 
I know you guys also haven't seen this tank in a while and I did clean it yesterday so it looks pretty good. If you guys are new, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell so you know the next time I upload a video. Don't forget to check the links down in the description for where you can get some Monte Carlo if you decide you want to try some out for your tank. Thanks again for watching guys. We'll see you next time. Thank you.